Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Wrocław. It is another glorious day here in Poland as Alti TV's coverage of the JJUC Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships continues with action from the under-20 Open Division of the World Juniors Ultimate Championships. It's a pleasure to be back with you. My name is Benjamin Rees, and I am joined once more by the one and only Rachel Toshnerova. Hello, Benji. Pleasure to be in the commentary booth with you once more. Another wonderful sunny day here in Wroclaw. And I thought about Wroclaw when I was uh, taking the tram to the fields today, and I've realized the only single issue with the city, and it is the spelling of it. It's just hard for English speakers. Yeah, for English speakers, it it it's tricky, but you get you get used to it after a while. We've come here enough times to enough wonderful tournaments that I I think I've just about got it down now. We've got Germany and Great Britain on the fields here today for this first game of five that we're streaming. And just the Germans beginning on offense, looking deep. This is going to invite some pressure underneath it, but it is chased down expertly by the Germans. It looks like Pettersson with the goal to give Germany a 1-0 lead. Nice clean hold to start the game for the Germans. Peterson coming from Leipzig. Don't get mistaken, his name is not John Peterson, as we would have thought, given uh, the name on the roster. It is indeed Jon Peterson. I don't know why Jon feels so much weirder to say to me than something like Johan, but <laughs> it just, somehow there's, there's a weird cognitive dissonance there. Either way. The English bias. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong start there for the Germans. Putting it deep, looking for that energizing big play early on. Nonetheless, excellent read by Peterson. He had two defenders on his back, still tracks it down, catches the disc, and puts the first point on the board for Germany. We are back at the WFDF YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in live so early in the morning. We realize it's a work day, but just have us in the background. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and that will allow you not only to receive reminders about all the upcoming action, but also to participate in the chat that is to the right of the video. We appreciate all of your comments and encouragements. Just make sure that the discussion remains nice and positive. We're at a junior tournament. Here is a pull for GB. Really strong pull as well from the Germans. And GB get to work quickly. Nicholas finds an option towards the near sideline in Tyler East. East, that sits that one up there a little bit. Not a problem for Jones to reel in. Beautiful, soft throw out into space there. Feathered that flick to Rafik. Now they're trying to swing it laterally across the pitch. Change the angle of attack. Going for the give-go now, perhaps. Not far outside the end zone, GB. Can they stay patient? Looking to sit this one out into space. Oh, it's too high for Jones. And he can't reel it in. He's certainly got a long reach, but that one asks too much of him. So the last throw into the end zone, we've seen so many of them, is just a bit too high for the receiver. There was a s little bit of second effort from the next person, but unable to get there as well. And here is Germany with a first chance to break. Yeah, clean hold on the first point for Germany. If they can get the early break here, I feel we give them that psychological advantage over their opponents. The old enemy, Great Britain. Down line. Bid comes in, I think there is a foul call. Clearly the L British O-line not ready to give up or give up that break this early. So an accepted foul keeps the disc in the hands of Germans. And the Germans are looking big straight away. Balzer is the target downfield and he catches it in stride. He's not quite in the end zone just yet, so he wants to sit this one out into the space for Bussinius. And that will be a clean German break there. Taking a 2-0 advantage, the Germans have come to play today. So a quick reaction after the call allows the Germans to create separation in the deep space. They put one up, yards of space on that catch, or meters rather. And here the continuation with a wild jump into the end zone for Busenius. Well, this is not the start that the Brits would have envisioned. Germany looking exceptionally slick out there. Busenius has played field hockey for 10 years and is wow. still active as a coach and an umpire. People who play hockey, whether it be that ice hockey, field hockey, 
maybe less so air hockey, but you've got to be hard as nails because that that you get the that, abuse you get as an empire, umpire. Well, <laughs> I mean, partly yeah, being a ref in any sport does does come with its own pitfalls, but like those like it that ball is so hard. I mean, you have to be. A little bit unhinged, I think, almost. We're going to check on the sideline if he still has all his teeth. Nonetheless, uh, greetings to Munich, where he's from, and his club teams, Münchner Kindler, which are the MUC's juniors, and two MUCL. Brilliant deep pull there from Germans. This is going to pin the Brits in their own end zone. Inside break goes to Rafik. Rafik finds Blunt. Blunt really spears that one at Robertson. Faking the hammer, there's not really an option for that. And then an ambitious throw looking for Rafik. That the degree of difficulty there, I think, is way higher than it needs to be. Viscopec will pick up. The lefty puts his one out into space. Defender Tyler East tried to get in there, was always a beat late. And now the Germany putting it deep again. They were looking for Dice, but actually it's Medger who comes through. And Germany can't connect just off the hands of Froschauer. Overthrow on that last backhand, but um, that was kind of good defense to start with from GB as they put up the poach deep into the open space, who was looking for that upline pass as well. But like you said, Benji, he got there a little too late and almost uh, caused a collision with Böhm, but luckily he got up unshaken, and here's GB one more time. Yeah, there definitely was contact there, and I must admit, I would like to uh, yeah, maybe recognize that if you're not going to get there in time, see you pull out of that a bit earlier. Into the center of the pitch now, finds Nichols, and Nichols throwing it deep, looking for Tyler East. He's got this, and he's got the easy juice. Those long strides into the end zone get Great Britain on the board at 2-1. So again, we saw about the same separation the Germans had in the last point from the G from the British players in this one. Good to stay tight. I like their inside throws a lot in this point. Let's see the replay. They find the inside channel and the deep continuation. Loads of separation. I think um, the Germans were, yeah, sort of trying to take away all the options on the open side. But once the Brits moved it to towards the middle, towards the break side, everyone else kind of just got open. It's a lovely put from Nicholas. Toby Nicholas, been playing for a decade already, despite the fact that he's at the under-20 level. Came up through the, the Flux school system, played with Birmingham and Chevron Action Flash and uh, puts down his sporting hero as a, a Chevron mainstay and uh, a player who's had a lot of impact actually on the GB Junior programs throughout the years, Matt Bevan. And now tries to repay some of that back by uh, coaching younger players himself. Here's the spin pull coming from Jet Hillborn. And that one lands in the end zone and Great Britain called for being offside here. So the disc is going to be brought just to the brick mark. <laughs> now that's unfortunate for such a nice pull. <laughs> yeah, something that the Brits are going to have to be aware of there. Coming underneath to the open side is Cher. Cher immediately racks it deep and batted away by Jack Slater. The most inexperienced player on this team. Been playing for just 10 months, but already making his impact felt. And that's an important defensive effort from GB, allowing them to take the break that the, that the Germans have stolen early right back. So far, vertical setups from both teams sticking to match D. Yeah, interestingly, that dump for Great Britain is rather than being lateral or backwards, is slightly forward as Great Britain's D-line wants to huck it immediately and skying the pack to bring that down is Cameron Weir. Weir wants to go back to Hillborn, the thrower. Hillborn outside the end zone. Tight coverage from the Germans. We've seen GB still in the red zone already this game. Hillborn wants to put this one out into space and Weir chases it down, the two of them, just playing it between themselves as Germany 
get broken back and Great Britain level it as two all. Well, it, I believe we're in for a treat. This seems like a game that's going to be tight, full of hucks, full of some fun skies, big plays, unless the boys actually start paying attention and try to take away uh, the deep game and force those unders. Yeah, I think I'd maybe <laughs> try and test the type patience a little bit more, especially when you've got targets for GB. Like we're six foot three, been playing for half a decade. Also, apparently, can eat three crackers without water in under 37.4 seconds, which is the kind of really niche fun fact that I admire. And we will have plenty more of those, so stick with us on the stream. WFDF is the website to watch all the U20 action happening this week. We are streaming all day, every day, up until Saturday when the finals will be happening at the stadium here at Bola Marshova. Yeah, you can watch the uh, watch all of the games from the World Junior Ultimate Championship, so that's the under-20 divisions, live here on the WFDF YouTube, as mentioned, for free, live and on demand, whenever you so desire. And all the under-17 games, so the European Youth Ultimate Championship EYUC games, will be streamed on OTCV's YouTube channel as part of their ongoing partnership with the EUF. Dice doesn't quite feel the pool as cleanly as he would like there, but runs a 1-2 with Biscopec. British defense late to get to the mark. And that one all bobbled and, and might have been blocked, but gets to go straight back into the hands of Dice. Now it's Germany looking for that inside channel. On the far sideline, Medgar goes central, Al Saleh. And there's a stoppage downfield, potentially a pick. Foul call accepted. Good identification of hand signals there, right? <laughs> Any time. Al Saleh <laughs> finds Peterson. <laughs> Peterson, oh, this one's too far out. Despite the bid from Maidka, he was never really going to get there. See that one more time. Yeah, just the wrong. Yeah, just <laughs> a bit behind the player. <laughs> So Great Britain have the disc now to take their lead for the first time this game. After being 2-0 down, this would be a good early fight back. And, well, maybe not, because trying to find an option on the far sideline, they just throw it straight out of bounds. Overthrows now on both sides. But who can make it all the way into the end zone? Germany playing it around the back to start the possession. Medga doesn't like the first upline cut, looking at an inside. But Boehm eventually works his way free. Really physical defense on that dump cut, and they get it past the bidding Hillborn. That leaves the breakthrough not quite into the end zone just yet, but they can't be more than a couple of yards away, or meters, I guess, for Germany. Bernecker goes back to Bohm. This is very patient end zone offense from the Germans with so far Great Britain doing their level best to stop them forcing it in. Finally, they get that shot back towards the open side. Hillborn just can't cover isolated one-on-one -on -one for that long. And it's Jakob Fass who makes it 3-2 Germany. I would like to say that the Brits were doing a good job putting on a mark that prevented the Germans from throwing breakside. But it was actually, I think, the Germans preventing themselves. <laughs> because they were setting up the stack sort of too much to the, to the breakside, meaning leaving a little space for that in, inside channel. And uh, hence being stuck with open side options. But it didn't matter too much because they eventually were able to bring that in. We'll see that on the replay. That upline cut didn't work out the first time. But the player smartly stayed in that area and it just took a quick turn of the shoulders yeah, to stay open. Just threatens coming back into the center and the yeah, the defender takes their eyes off, assumes that that's that's where the cut's gonna be made, and then takes the opportunity to burn back to the open side. So three two Germany lead, neither side perfect so far, each with a break. So the game on serve in the early openings here. 
Both teams sporting the national kits that we have seen previously on both of these nations. Nothing new there. Not too, not too many new national team jersey designs at this event. Yeah, everything seems to be uh, about what we about what we're used to. I think with the uh, the USA jerseys we saw make their debut at at World Games. They're, I think probably the busiest jerseys we see. Generally, teams going for these cleaner looks, like a uh, like we see out here at the moment. That one right past the bidding defender. Jones sticks out a long arm to get it past Luke, who is going to be a standout defender for the Germans. Nicholas, we've seen the throwing power that he possesses. Has the disc back in his hands now. Just playing it short between the handler set. Now the opportunity comes to strike it deep. And again, for the second time this game, it's Nicholas to East for the score. Three all. East has been playing for seven years. It comes out of Warwick. Uh, of, of where? Is that not how you pronounce it? You, you'd, you'd pronounce it Warwick. Well, there you go. It's all right. So <laughs> learn, you learn something every day. I think it's a good uh, taste of your own medicine, kind of. Oh, yeah, our language. Our language I did is, not do it on purpose. Our, so. our language is stupid. I make no bones about that. Sorry, I, I'll let you finish. In any case, uh, he has a club experience from Lemmings Bath. Yeah, Bath, uh, uh, Lemmings based in Lemmington, which is, <laughs> yeah, uh, close, to, close, to, close to Warwick, just kind of one of the next towns over. Uh, Bath based in Cheltenham, which is a little bit further south. Well, now that I think about it, Benji, there is a there is a song when I get to the Warwick Avenue, and that's what I've been singing my whole life. So, a part of me, a part of my life story, has been ruined on this stream. In any case, we're saying hi to Nathan and Kelly East, who are the fans at home for Tyler East, and he's done a great job in the last point for GB. Also, apparently, uh, is a chef and cooks over 2,000 meals a week. What? Yeah, so been uh, cooking up some deep looks early, apparently, as well. <laughs> Players on the sideline fascinated by the big screen that we have in front of our commentary booth where they can watch the replays live. To be fair, it happens at every tournament. As soon as people see themselves on telly, they get so excited. Dice wants the upline cut, but fakes it, goes into the backfield, where the catch is made under pressure by Preya. Prayer goes back to Dice. A mop of curly hair. Vying. Back to Dice. Everything's underneath at the moment for the German defense. But now they see the opportunity to put it. Can it be chased down? No. Too far out in front. A couple of potential targets, but neither of them able to catch up to it. Vying had a little bit of separation on that deep cut, but still two defenders from GB were very much ready for that throw. So another chance for, for GB to take their first lead. They had to just go on the last German O point, but couldn't make it stick. And that one right past the bidding defender, but it must have done enough to distract Great Britain because the disc hits the floor. That one popped up there, but brought down by Vying. Now a little dish off to Bernecker. Wants to continue that break side flow, but it's not there. So they redirect the flow of traffic and a simple drop from Biskopek will give Great Britain the disc again. You could see he was just looking for the immediate continuation of the leading pass into the open side and just lost his concentration for a second. And not a surprise that GB is going to take a timeout in this slightly messy point, just in the number of turnovers, not the quality of the Frisbee. Yeah, you can tell that they... Uh, how important they feel like this break is getting the lead for the first time this game so while they knock heads together and uh, work out how they're going to attack the game after this timeout, we're going to take a little breather in the booth as well but don't go anywhere because this game continues on the other side the ultimate things in life are free and we're keeping it that way subscribe to keep up the latest games tournaments and community content Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread Ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. I'll keep to you.
Welcome back to the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championship. Ulti TV's coverage live here on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube channel. Under 20 open division action between the old enemies of Great Britain and Germany. You can leave all the old sentiment behind. It's all about what happens in the just under two hours out here on the fields of Poland. Thank you everyone for tuning in at the WFDF YouTube channel. We have some parents tuning in. Toby Jones' parents are watching, cheering for him. It's uh, GB's number 75. Lots of German fans as well. Here is GB tapping the disc back into play. Faking the open side under. Second option comes into that space and gets the disc. That's Ring Rose. Now on the sideline. Going for the inside break to try and get it off. But that's a really tricky throw. Didn't really step out enough for it to get it past the mark. And it hits the turf. Germany once again with the disc. A long time ago, I believe they started on offense. It did indeed. How many chances will the GB D-line give them? Not been made to punish their mistakes so far. This one into space. Dice's defender was on the floor. And Dice finds the option at the front of the end zone. And Germany get away with it. They hold to take a 4-3 lead. I thought after that defensive slip, Germany were going to be able to uh, exploit that and get the score directly. But they needed two more passes to do that but eventually they get their offensive hold. GB trying to stay active, stay energized here. On the one hand, yes, you're disappointed that you had all those opportunities and you never really came close to scoring, but you are generating the turnovers and I think you have to trust that your D-line offense is gonna figure it out. I agree. Here's the um, funny kind of observation that I've been making from these U20 games. It seemed, to me, it almost seems like whatever cut is not a reset cut where they usually fake the dump, like a cut into the dump space and the upline cut. It just has been a case of who's gonna outrun who. As in, there, there's not that much fakes happening downfield. It's just players trying to put themselves in a position and then await the right timing to just out sprint their defender. It feels like there's a lot of, yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of rel reliance on athleticism rather than a bit more craft or nous about it. They will get there eventually for sure. Still plenty of years of playing to come, hopefully for all of these players. My strategy is just let everyone else run around and then find yourself in space. Here's Nicholas. Resetting towards the far sideline. Getting the disc back in his hands now. They're trying to keep that disc moving quickly. Lovely inside flick to the front of the stack for Bernard. Here's Toby Jones. Often he's the deep target. This time he's opening up the arm and he finds Bernard. Can he adjust and find the option at the front of the end zone? He can, and a huge kick spike out of GB as they make it four apiece. So still tied at four. We knew this was gonna be a nail biter. I'm really hoping for a tight game all the way. It seems like the fans in the chat are excite excited about it as well, saying very tight game, we love it. You can see it again here on the replay. Catch in front of the end zone. Yeah, it, uh, it's Tyler East who sees the space open up and attacks it. They just sit the throw out there and uh, you just don't quite see it there on the replay, but he goes for an all, a Pat McAfee-esque monster punt of the disc afterwards. And they see there's some uh, German fans, parents, <laughs> members of the Federation, sometimes multiple of those. I believe that's... Uh, uh, Benjamin Schlechter's dad, who's the president of the Federation. I wouldn't know what he looks like, but sure, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> In the uh, maroon Germany jersey there. I think I, I, I say that because I think I saw it on the back of his jersey. There you go. Don't tell us all your secrets. I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe, uh, maybe I've got to keep some things, keep my cards a bit closer to my chest sometimes. Can't give them all, all our trade secrets. Another spinning pull from GB. Seems like we've managed without an offside. Not a common occurrence or commonly called occurrence. Dice, who's been also doing a lot of heavy lifting in the backfield, goes around to Al Saleh. Nice underneath there for Pettersson. Back to Dice. Looking for the around break. Eventually finding the underneath option of Pettersson. Trying to get that sneaky little up line space to the bespectacled vying. Very loud stall count <laughs> on that force, which I like to be fair. Let your teammates know what the stall count's getting to as the continuation throw lasered into the end zone to give Germany a 5 4 lead. The offense looking a lot more organized on that possession. And clean offensive hold. We haven't seen one of those in a while in this game. Both defensive line causing a lot of trouble out there. But Germany goes up as we watch the last few passes of the previous point once more. A backhand for the up line and a lefty put into the space all the way to the back cone of the end zone. It is so well weighted. Just sitting up and inviting the reception. 5-4 Germany lead. But you can tell how evenly matched these two sides are out there at the moment. Even without looking at the scoreline. 100%. We're also saying hi to Jet, number 37 on the GB squad. His girlfriend is watching and cheering. <laughs> and then there are some other people um, trying to become Jet's girlfriend or boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, Jet Hillborn, who we've seen be a key, uh, a key piece of uh, GB's D-line offense, uh, it based in Sheffield now, but actually from Malaysia originally. This one will be walked to the brick mark by the Brits. It's right with a disc in the hands. Underneath option is Robertson. Faking the backhand, gets low to release the flick. Toby Jones pops it off to his namesake, Toby Nicholas. Germany with a force middle. Trying to change things up here just to, uh, yeah, just to maybe confuse and slow down that GB offense a little bit. But there's the option to the break side. The bid comes in, doesn't get there. I don't know if he's in the end zone just yet. Not quite. Blunt. Has it right on that front cone. The upline cut surely will come, but it's palmed away by Tim Kappel. He was ready and waiting for that to go. The last backhand just a little too slow. And the defender, like you said, expecting it very much. Germans centering the disc first. Cutter comes and powers underneath in Balzer. Bouncer wanting to put it deep again, but I think he's got too much on this. Heroic effort for Meyerhofer, but was never really going to catch up to that. Nice demonstrative layout out of Germany. You kind of have to do that on the stream. Right. I mean, you could call it gratuitous, or you could say it's 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 demonstrating the commitment that is uh, that he that he's put in and that he wants his teammates to put in as well. Nicholas I realize demonstrative is probably not a word. <laughs> no, demonstrative is demonstrative is very much a word. You're, you're all you're all good on that front. That one really lasered too far. More just put far too much juice into that. I think these boys are just not tired enough yet. All those throws are going into the spaces where they should be going. There's receivers open, but it's just too much energy on them, too much power. 
And that's why they sometimes end up overthrown, but this one is to no one. Probably a result of a high stall count. I, th I think there was a uh, a foul call away from the disc, but they're gonna and they might decide here that this won't affect. But still, there is there is clearly discussion there between Toby Nicholas and Sebastian Meyerhofer about the level of contact that they are happy with. Of course, ultimate. It's written as a non-contact game. So you always have to try and play with as little contact as possible. Some teams don't mind a little bit of extra physicality, but that boundary should be set by the team that is uh, least comfortable with it. Lots of clapping in the open side, signaling the open receiver. Blunt resets central. Nathan Wright wants to blade this over the top. And again, we know that Toby Jones has that long reach and wingspan, but they're asking too much of him there. Can yeah. Germany take the time out? Smart move. Yet again, we had another one at another point with several turnovers on both sides. You know, in, these ga in games like this, any point could really be decisive. So a smart move from the Germans to recover, huddle up, and see what they can do about the next offensive hold for them. Yeah, seeing a lot of good feedback uh, for the players in the YouTube chat here. Over 300 of you watching this under-20 open game between Germany and Great Britain. Shout out there for Cam Weir of Great Britain. Uh, List is sporting hero as Will Jackson, creator of the Arctic Stags Frisbee Club, who are in, in the chat themselves. And here's another fun one for me. Horsham, England, is it? Horsham. <laughs> any, any other UK place names you need, you need refreshing on? Just wait till you get to places like Chumley and Mausel. You'll love those. Well, we're going to take a little break in our commentary booth as I freshen up on my English geography. Yeah, we'll be back with you very shortly. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want Welcome back to WJUC action here from the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships under 20 Open Division. Great Britain versus Germany, and Germany up 5-4. Have the disc coming off this timeout with a chance to break. Checked in, and they're getting Luke heading deep from the back of the stack. East got dragged underneath ever so slightly. The put went immediately as the last back defender. You've got to be aware that that could go, and Germany break to make it 6-4. And that was a great way for Germany to come out of that timeout. Great use of it. They've done this before. And right now we see the British defender walking away on the sideline, shaking his head, being like, "Where? what was I thinking? Where was I standing? Uh, it's clearly a thing that Germany is going to resort to once you give them that, la that little bit of separation, meaning that you will stand in front of them trying to protect the undercut first, they will put it immediately. And they have done it so well throughout the game. And actually, to be fair, both sides have shown that they are not afraid to uncork the long bomb. But sometimes it is kind of hard to remember when you're focusing on so many things that you have just heard in the huddle and then you're meant to go on the field once more. Honestly, that, that's the one thing I think could that, that could be the coach's job, where when they see a defender coming in after a timeout clearly with his head full of information, that's maybe the one thing you still have time to shout right before the disc t gets tapped in. Yeah, sometimes you can very much overload and muddle the thinking, and some you do need to remember that you know the very basics of uh, yeah where you need to be adjusting that positioning and making sure that you uh, don't allow that deep strike. 
So the big ball comes from the arm of Prayer. And was that dropped? Couldn't get a look at it on the sideline. Looks like it. Germany have the disc already. What a dagger this would be as they're trying to hammer it to the back of the end zone and that was not the option. Well, the morning games here in Wroclaw have the advantage of having the least wind out of the five. But there might be an occasional gust that will occur when you least expect it. And I think this was definitely the instance. Yeah, the German handler just locked onto that receiver. Never really turned to look at any other option. So the British were then bail out of jail free, free card. Is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah, get out of jail free. <laughs> Paul Lee, who told us that he would come on in this game after about 25 minutes. And, well, it's taken about 35 minutes, but he has made his bow onto the pitch. Right. Doesn't like the backhand. Goes to put the flick out to space where Poli chases it down. And now he wants to laser it down the far sideline. Never going to be reeled in. The friction gloves banner gets in the way of that layout. But as he you know, we keep our banners outside the field. So even if he had made that catch, he would have been called out of bounds. He would, I mean, he also would have, he could have been wearing five pairs of friction gloves and he still wouldn't have got to that one. There's only so much the equipment can do for you. So Germany with another chance to break. The, pull went out, the throw went out of bounds reasonably early as well. So Germany already level with their own brick mark. Gertz. Big fake there from Biskopek. Lovely reset cut from Bernecker. Sits Nicholas down. And now Biskopek, the lefty, roasts it deep and it is snagged out of the air by Great Britain. The defender looks like it's Matt Quinn. The German defender peels off to protect the open side from the huck. GB forced to go under. Nicholas has a deep striker but doesn't like it on that occasion instead. Lovely inside break to Pauli. Pauli now to Bernard. Takes the reset. Back to right. Nicholas tries to squirm his way through as the reset. Gets it past the big the bidding defender. This one always put up to space, but really well judged. Nicholas just faked that a little bit too early. If he'd stayed on it, would have had the option to this side, but Poli gets the disc eventually from Umar Rafiq, the thrower, and Great Britain go back to within one at 6-5. He came to fist bump us before the game to thank us for the streaming and he said to watch out for him on the field. And we did. He reels this one in for GB. Thomas Polly plays for Air Badgers and has played for GB already in the under 17 category. Yeah, Air Badgers, one of the, uh, one of the main players at the youth level, multiple time national champions. Facing the southwest down in Exeter. I would have gotten that one right. I believe you. Yeah, don't worry. I believe you. So we're almost 40 minutes into this game. We are playing until 100 in the under 20 category, as opposed to the U17, where the minute where the games last about 80 minutes each. They do indeed, so it is first to 15, but as Rachel mentioned, if we haven't reached that score by the 100 minute mark, you finish the point, add one to the highest score, and that becomes your new score cap. It prevents games in uh, yeah, really attritional conditions from, uh, from taking too long. But you do still need to score that last point to win. Here's that big backhand blade of a pull from Hillborn. It lands and rolls out of the far sideline, and GB will get the chance to try and trap them on the line here. I like that there. Uh, it's not just about pulling this as deep as we can. We do want to set up these awkward rolls and these traps. Forcing them into that sideline. 
reset centrally to Schlechter. The German dumps it, dump and swing strikes again. Scher gets it past the bidding defender. I think there was a pick downfield. I don't think this will affect that throw. And now disc back in, going deep again. They've got that size match up downfield, but it doesn't matter because the disc is overthrown. Looking for Simon Hesse. Hesse kind of gives up on it. It just had too much speed on it. And he realized early that this is not worth putting energy into. Yeah, Hesse was here at EYUC 2019, which was again in Wrocław. Came fourth with Germany under 17s and also played for the Bora Bears that took a really creditable ninth place at XCUCF back in October. Great Britain, oh, I thought that might have gone to turf, but a required rescue there from Matvey Morozov. On the sideline here is Ines Rose Pierce. That one just thrown out of the sideline. And a little tap of the disc there from Kappel just to make sure. Although actually, might have been better off not going for that because it means that Germany will lose a bit of field position. That was a difficult place to get out of and kind of obvious that if pressure is applied, a turnover might be inevitable. So Schlechter has it. Looking for that low release backhand. Forst does a good job of dissuading that from going. Luksch, back to Schlechter. Lovely cut from Luke. Guts free towards the open side, into the end zone. Past the bit of Sebastian Meyerhofer. I was so looking forward to making that joke about Schlechter being besser. Schlechter me meaning worse in German, besser meaning better. And had Germany waited for him to do the upline cut because he had some meters on his defender, they might have, might have done a better job scoring that last point. Here's GB going the other way. Yeah, with Weir dishing off to Hillborn. You can see what an important asset to this D-line offense Hillborn is. That deep put to space, and it's that link up again. Hillborn to Will, uh, to Weir. Gets GB's second break just as they got GB's first. Tied up again at sixes. You can tell that there is such a natural chemistry between the two of them. Were they both on the U17 GB squad? Because where was? And actually, it's uh, it's not Hillborn with the throw. I must have missed something in the middle there. <laughs> in any case, that was a lovely put. And despite it being a little bit slower, and we've seen those defended in this game, it found its intended receiver perfectly. And we have some people in the chat asking about the schedule for the games. So all the games that are streamed are either here at the WFDF channel or Alti TV. We're only streaming one field from this tournament, but we are here all week long, five days a game every day, except for the Saturday where we only have the finals. And if you would like to check out the other results from the other games for yourself, just make sure to click the link that's in the description of the video, yeah, jjuc.sport. jjuc.sport. Our other streamed games for today after this one at 11 o'clock local time, Colombia versus Hungary under 20 mix. That game will be on the WFDF YouTube channel. Then we switch over to Ulti TV's YouTube channel at one o'clock, under 17 open, Great Britain versus Italy. Under 17 women at three o'clock, again on Ulti TV's YouTube channel, Germany versus Great Britain. So we'll see these two countries match up again. And then under 20 women back to WFDF YouTube at five o'clock for New Zealand versus Germany. That's a really low throw that is caught spectacularly there by Bernacker. Wait, we're all, we're all working on this camera right now, so it's just you. I'm just looking at the screen, I'll let you know if, uh, if you need to change it, but it's just your camera right now. Yeah, just zoom out as much as you can as well. It, like, that was fun. Disc check back in. Freya to Biskopek. Fakes the dump cut. Tight space. Eventually, they're able to get prior three. 
and then going towards the end zone is incomplete. Thanks, Milan, for telling us how sensitive the field microphone is. I'm sure all the viewers at home appreciate it. Milan, we can still hear you very clearly. <laughs> but Milan can't hear us. That's okay. Just get to know some of our video crew that has been br bringing you the coverage all week long. Milan van den Boven, <laughs> Kampf, doing an excellent job fixing stuff. And here is a deep shot by Breton. Yeah, this is going to hang a little bit, but reeled in. Quinn throws it away in celebration for the first time this game. Great Britain lead from being 6-4 down. They're now up 7-6. And Matt Quinn, seven years of playing experience, is making his sporting hero, Toby Jones, proud. He says Toby is a god at Frisbee and basically his mentor. Yeah, Jones, his teammate, number 75. And uh, his, cap his, his captain, his, uh, his second cousin is also on this team, Matt Ward, the number 24 jersey. Germany, having uh, having conceded three in a row now, choosing to take the time out. Both, time, both teams have two per half to use. Germany using their second here. And we're going to take a little bit of a break in the booth as well. But we'll be right back with you on the other side. Have to bid. Oh, just a oh, just a <laughs> football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the Joint Junior Ultimate Championships here in Wrocław, Poland. Great Britain up 7-6 at the moment. And Hilborn going with that spin pull again, this time trying to pin Germany deep rather than on the sideline. Germany one point away from taking the, sorry, Britain one point away from taking the half. If Germany could hold here, we'd get ourselves a galaxy point. That throw low, but perfect form on the layout from Cher. Doesn't like that break back hand here. Goes into the center of the pitch to Vajig. Balzer, happy to lose yards to keep possession on that reset. Now Luke Shaw on the sideline immediately gets it off central. Back to Cher. Very happy to be patient so far, the Germans. Slotted in to Bessinius. Gets wide and low for that around swing. Bautzer. Nice arounds from Germany, but they're unable to get the swings going. Level with the attacking brick mark well. Luke with the hammer. Bang on the money for Germany. And we've got ourselves a galaxy point. Couldn't have asked for a better first half in this GB Germany matchup. And just sometimes it just takes a little bit of creativity to realize there is no wind right now. And the break side is all open. Germany finished strong with a hammer. Here's GP, that was the drop pull. 
that we didn't quite see. And tied at seven is this U20 matchup on field number one here in Wroclaw. We have lots of fans in the WFDF YouTube chat, not only from Germany and GB, but also from Kenya, the Netherlands, and all sorts of other countries. Very exciting that we have international audience. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay true to us all week long. We have plenty more of U20 and U17 action, bringing you the best young stars from all over the world, ready to rise and make their mark on the international scene. Galaxy Point starts now. It's like Universe, just a little bit smaller. Sudden death to take half, as that is a, a monster of a pull from Germany. Too big, in fact, as that uh, is going to land out the back of the end zone. And Great Britain will get a chance to bring it to the brick mark. What a pull. Huge, but actually could have done with taking a little bit off it. Tight match D from Germany. Almost forces GB to put up a deep shot last second, but they find the reset at the end. And it bobbled into Jones's hands. He was coming deep from the handler set there. A cutter coming underneath as well. And this one is going to be tipped. Can GB get it at the second attempt again? Not this time. Really good defense from Medger. Ole Medger with a chance for Germany to take the half. Pekol stops the game almost immediately. Germany setting their vertical step stack quite deep, knowing that GB have been doing a good job preventing their deep shots recently. So I think they now realize that they will have to work hard for, for the undercuts and move the disc one by one. Check back in. Bernacke, you see a lot of some of the O-line pieces crossing over here. So they can get this great break back before half time with GB beginning to begin the second. Kappel going down the far sideline past the bidding defender. Oh, cheeky high release to Dice. What can Dice do? Go central to Schlechter. Continuation. Balzer. Going back to Schlechter. Schlechter to Dice in the end zone. Spikes it to the floor. And Germany break on Galaxy Point to take an 8-7 halftime lead. Germany with an, a heroic effort to bring this half home in their favor. First, the nice defense on the rushed upline throw from GB. That's it. They smack it out of the air. Then they keep it patient in front of the end zone. Take the reset to Schlechter and have two open receivers in the end zone. So Schlechter makes his team besser, and we're going into half. Seven minutes of a break, Benji. Yeah, you were really so keen to get that pun in, weren't you? Yes, and I'm going to do it twice more in the second one. Excellent. 8-7 Germany lead here at halftime. Halftime's at seven minutes here in all the divisions at JJUC. So we're going to take the chance to get a breather. Get everything ready and raring to go for the second half of this under-20 open game with your half-time score. Germany 8, Great Britain 7. Bichon picks up and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I can't not believe what those. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Haslinger Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lola. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans, and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group, group of, of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts, and we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. 
Ciao ragazzi, support the community. Let's subscribe Uzi TV. There's lots of the videos, posting, everything. Check it out. Uzi, <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Uzi TV. Regardez Uzi TV. Deviens un membre d'Ulti TV et fais grandir ta communauté. Top Ulti TV, salme et roginkime Ultimate of Andromeda. Si tu veux aider à Ulti TV, tu peux être membre de Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Everyone, follow Ulti.tv on Instagram, on YouTube, they've got everything. Best like, content. Like their pictures if you love frisbee, just do it. We're counting on you. Leave me a love for Ulti TV. Became member of Ulti TV. Mamma <laughs> mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow ultimate. We want to grow ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Gonna have to bid. Oh, just a oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed.
Welcome back to Ulti TV's coverage of the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships. Live from Wrocław, Poland. WJUC action here, under 20 Open Division with Germany on serve, up 8-7. Going into the second half and GB putting this one out there. This is gonna float for miles. And coming down with it over the pack is Bernard putting it into the end zone. GB hold, it was a little bit sketchy, but I'm not sure they mind. How did he do that? Let's see that on the replay. That was huge. There were so many people in that area, so many more closing in. Everyone got there on time, but some of them jumped early. And it's Bernard who brings it down. Incredibly impressive by GB. We start the second half the way we've been um, witnessing the first one, I would say. Lots of deep shots from, first, uh, from both teams. Germany connecting on them at the start of the game, then the Brits managed to take that game away, but Germany come out strong in the last point of the first half, taking the Galaxy point as a break, but uh, now GB definitely showing that they're unwilling to stay behind much more. Yeah, it's been a very even contest, and with that deep shot, Biscopet got up so early that I thought for sure he was gonna rip it down, but it wasn't to be. So as we said, the early morning here in Wrocław usually is not the witness to too much wind, but I can start feeling it now. It is usually blowing from the right side of your screen to the left, but more towards the camera, so to speak. So also in our faces. And we will see how both teams will be able to battle that and adjust their games accordingly. Now this is a lovely pull. First O point of the second half for Germany, as you mentioned, a really deep, soaring pull there from the Brits. Still in their own end zone after that first pass. They might have to keep going backwards here. Here's the deep shot from the Germans. We did say that both sides were keen to put it deep and well boxed out there by Simon Hesse. Judged it really well. Balzer. Balzer goes back to Schlechter. Schlechter to Hesse. Now playing it short in the backfield. Hesse puts that one out into space, jumped into the end zone. Cool as you like for Balzer. Germany retake the lead at 9-8. I love that not only did they use the deep game, but after that, when there wasn't the continuation shot to the end zone, it's all right. We'll just play it around a little bit until we can get our end zone set sorted. Can I just talk about Simon Hesse here? Yes. He can. is 190 centimeters tall, but that is not the only impressive thing about him. He is working so hard out there for Team Germany. His cuts have been just so well prepared and just so kind of decisive and I just feel like he is very patient with the disc as well because you can see him look downfield for the two or three seconds when there's nothing there he just goes for the easy reset just very sort of almost boring German ultimate but so so effective his career highlight so far was the EYUC in 2019 not surprised was also happening here in Wrocław and uh, he has club experience with Bora, where he got ninth at XEUCF in 2021. Yeah, and Bora took some scalps that tournament, including the fourth best team in the world in moon catches. So again, two clean offensive holds by both teams to start off the second half. Both teams once again showing off their deep game, just like the first half never happened. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see uh, just to our right, just to my right hand side, Matthew Ward's got his arm in a sling, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But injured it in the Austria game yesterday, he's telling us. So that's uh, that's a sore one, as my word, the force a bit and bit down hard on that fake. Yeah, Nicholas sends his defender flying. I thought that was going to be a smart switch passed off, but the message never got through. Moore finds Jones. A couple of players take off and charge deep. 
Instead, that little rolling reset pass finds a way to bisect the two British players into the end zone. Just rushed it slightly, and Berm couldn't catch up to it. And some German hats being slapped into the ground on the sideline. What a chance and what a gift that was for the Germans. And unfortunately, it goes wasted. I like the pick up, the quick pick up and the put into the end zone. But there's not enough feather and fluff on that throw. Just needs to sit it up there a little bit. Exactly what I was talking about. You're expecting no wind. And then all of a sudden on that easy pass, it pushes your disc down to the ground. Nathan Wright goes back to Toby Nicholas. Jones reaches out with that long right arm. High release looking for Nicholas. Brings it in. There's a pick in the stack, but I'm not sure whether that affects it. And I think Nicholas... Calling oh. an injury as he landed heavily on that right foot, coming down from that high grab. Yeah, maybe cramping up slightly, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, that's on one hand a positive piece of news, and on the other, isn't it a bit too early in a tournament to get a cramp? I mean, I feel so, especially first game of the day or whatever, but sometimes it does just happen. You land awkwardly, and uh, yeah, that lactic acid gets gets into the gets into the muscles, and it is it's painful. I think most of us know what it's like. And in fairness to Toby, he has been doing a big chunk of work on the GB offense, getting every other disc. He says he, his brother played, and he caught him into, into playing Ultimate Frisbee. And his career highlight so far has been representing England in the World Schools competition in Le Mans. It's not a bad outing, mate. Get to represent your, your school and your country and... Uh, Give a nice visit to Le Mans into the bargain as well. So if you were wondering about the format of the U20 Open uh, division here at this tournament, we are currently finding ourselves in Pool. 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 Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> in a. Pool A, that's right. Besides Germany and GB, we have Colombia, Austria, the USA, and France. And uh, the other te the other pool has the other six teams, which is Poland, Czech Republic, Belgium, New Zealand, Italy, and Canada. So both of these teams lost their first two games. Germany going down 15-6 to the USA, and then losing on Universe to Austria, 15-14. For Great Britain, they lost to Austria 15-11 and a 15-5 loss to France. If you want to follow the results yourself, just hit the link in the description of the video that you're watching. JJUC.sport is the address, but here is Britain back on O. And that one thrown straight into the waiting arms of Biskopec. These are the dangers of turning around when you're throwing a disc. High um, grab for Germany. Biskopec goes coast to coast and catches the goal for the double happiness and the German break. And they are in the ascendancy again. 10-8 to Deutschland. Again, that quick response immediately after the interception on the missed dump by GB. Two more passes, quick continuation into the end zone. Yeah, we see the thrower turn his back, loses. It's never a good idea. Yep, loses the sight of the receiver. And a one well-weighted forehand into the end zone for Biskupek. Germany up 10-8. So we have seen Great Britain come from this position before. A couple of times they've been a breakdown, got that back. And actually on one occasion, tacked on another one as well to take the lead. Still 30 more minutes to go of game time. I believe we will be finished before that, given the speed of the points. But then again, we've seen some quick ones at the start of the first half, and that's kind of how the fir first half went. Yeah, and we'll see. But, but then we got longer points with um, a bigger number of turnovers later on in the first half. So, And if GB cannot get Nicholas ready to go again, that's a huge piece of their O-line that they're going to miss. Oh 
Schlechter pulls for Germany. Again, it sits and it hangs. Great Britain already dropped the pool once this game. Not on this occasion. Switching a lot of players over. Hillborn wanting to really run the offense at the moment. Going every other pass. And now Hillborn sees the target. Is his favorite target a Tyler East and he climbs Jacob's ladder and brings it down over Tim Kappel to make it 10-9. Huge sky. Tim Kappel did everything he could with the position that he was able to get himself into for that disc. But look at that hanging throw. And he grabs it behind himself as he waits for it to start descending. And that's an important quick hold for GB. Now they can focus on their D-line and try to even out the score once more. I've been so impressed with the play of, uh, of Hillborn, the Malaysian native for Great Britain. He's, you know, we've seen again, like on that deeper there, he's certainly got that throwing arsenal, but it's, he's so busy on the field. It's not a question of, you know, I'm gonna pass it and then wait and hang back. It's as soon as he's throwing, he's on the move. He's trying to get the disc back, create new angles, create new opportunities. It's a very enjoyable play style to watch. Jets got the Jets. Yeah, 100%. He's won the Uni Men's Outdoor Nationals after being 10 to 5 down in the finals on game point. He played every point and helped Sheffield to their first win in recent history. The University of Sheffield, back in my day, they were known as the Fatheads. I don't know whether they still are. Well, he doesn't have to make up that big of a deficit in this game. No, just the one point down now. And that pull, I think, landed in bounds before bouncing out. So Dice brings it in from the sideline. Lovely reset cut from Biskopek. Into the thighs of Al Salah. GB's disc right on the end zone line. Hillborn will pick up. Oh, he wanted to get catch them off guard. Instead, he's just gonna pop the hammer to the break side. Cool as you like. Never in doubt there for Matvey Mo Mozorov. Why is I struggling with that so much? Matvey Mozorov <laughs> makes the grab to make it 10 apiece. Because it's Slavic, that's why. In any case, GB get the break they so much desired. We're we're tied at 10. I'm not surprised, Benji. We knew this was going to be a tight game from the start. Look at that calm <laughs> walk towards the disc and then the quick movement. I believe the German defenders will be disappointed that they didn't stay tighter even towards the break side because that hammer was hanging for a while in the air. But the better for us, the tighter the better. Yeah, it did helix slightly, but as you mentioned, just the defense not close enough for that really threatened on that one. Ten apiece, back on serve. Every time it feels like the Germans might be pulling away, Great Britain have pegged them back as they have here and you get the feeling that whatever the result, it's not going to be more than one or two points. Pulls, pull from GB goes up. Again, deep into the German end zone. First pass goes to Schlechter, so they've gained a decent amount of field position with that. All cheeky high release and uh, Cher actually went up a little bit early initially, but kept his position and brought it in. Lukes gets low, cheeky, low release break. And then the continuation from Cher, not quite in the end zone and behind the intended target there of Busenius. Can you believe the pressure on those catches? The last few throws have been just so difficult for the Germans and then they missed the pass, unfortunately, on the somewhat free receiver. Here is GB hoping to get a second break in a row. They're putting it deep. East is the target again, but this time two defenders there and it's Jakob Fass who gets the block. Interesting play from Fass there. He looked like he caught the disc on D and then kind of placed it gently on the ground. 
Yeah, so I think he will say that he never actually had full control of it. But in any case, he don't have double turnovers anymore. He would, uh, Germany would still get the disc, but he would be forced to take it. Low towards the sideline for Luke. Luke pops this one up a little bit. And despite the best efforts of Simon Hesse, it goes out of the sideline. He gets high, but forced to watch his feet at the same time. He loses sight of the disc just for a split second and it floats over his head. Here is Hilborn with the pickup. What can Jet do? Oh, what on earth? The scuba to the break side. Absolutely love it. Rose Prize there for the rescue. Here's East. Forward for Weir. Weir sees a target going towards the sideline. Toad in bounds. Germany say goal. And GB retaking the lead in this game. They have had it a couple of times throughout the match, but Germany has been having the upper hand in the second half so far. And now they raise up their arms in a power pose, clapping their hands hoping to regain the momentum once more, keeping their mental toughness skills put in good use. And we don't have the shot down the line because Dice absolutely finied us. <laughs> He's good at Frisbee. Not good at staying out of the way, apparently. Seriously, how many times do we need to play the finning reel? It's just that people are too invested in the game. It, it's, it's so easy to get sucked in and you want to make sure that you get a good look at it as well. And then, but in doing so, the irony is that you uh, stop everyone else get a good look at, getting a good look at it. But I think it was very well spirited from Germany there. They were within the rights to ask, did he, well, did he toe it in bounds? But there were a couple of players who signaled early that he was able to do so cleanly. And Great Britain take the lead for the second time in this game. They're up 11-10. Last time they were in position, they were up 7-6. Germany held and then broke on Galaxy Point to retake the lead again. Great Britain, of course, will be hoping that they can hold on to this for a little bit longer on this occasion. Rolling pull stopped immediately by Biskupek. Here's Finney, I mean Dice. Goes across the field to Bernecker. Bernecker back to Dice. Just past the bidding defender into the hands of Berm. Berm to Vying. At the moment, GB forcing Germany to have to play it short. There's no expansive option available to them at the moment. Can they stay patient? Fying. To Dice is a little bit behind him. He sticks out the end. But this time. GB with a really short field to go. Yeah, Dice comes up empty. It rolls the snake eyes. It's Hillborn again with the hammer. And no way. There will be some German de defenders calling this down. Over. So the initial receiver fell over and then it was nearly caught, but Germany tipped it. And then the layout at the back of the end zone might well have rescued this for GB. Hillborn, who's been, you know, I think he's feeling himself a little bit. The hot hand towards the back of the end zone. Oh, I tell you what, I, I can't tell you anything. Yeah, we will have to rely on the players to discuss this one. No game advisors, very few people on the sideline there that could provide perspective from the back of the end zone. We will get a slow-mo replay. And we have the German coach from the front of our screen signaling a down call to his players on the field. And yeah, they should get a... More players approaching. I think they're going to get a, some... GB players over to have a look at this as well. Okay. 
We might have to slow it down a little bit again. So here we go. Happy with this bit. See there, the initial receiver slips. It's tipped by Germany. Players get in the way. Disc. So, a discussion of both teams in front of our big screen you might catch some of it Germany seems to have seen it and are convinced that it's down GB player on the sideline was arguing that he thinks his hands underneath it and he can't see when they establish control so it seems like the disc will go back which is 100% the correct decision if the players cannot agree And Hillborn, one more time with a disc in his hands. Yeah, not a surprise to see him not go for the hammer. But he tries his luck a second time, and this one is out the back. Germany will feel that, uh, that everything's fair. So everything has sorted itself out. We are glad that you have plenty of opinions in the chat. The players managed to figure out the situation, but here is Germany back on offense. And what seems like a hand block will be called a foul. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see Hillborn go back to the hammer after it failed the first time. <laughs> so another discussion. We've had excellent display of spirit from so many different teams so far on the stream. You can check out the Spirit scores together with the results at the tournament website, which is linked. But here is a deep shot from Germany. A result of a high stall situation. Lands in the other end zone, but no receivers anywhere near. Yeah, way overshot there from Germany. Felt like, as you mentioned, just a high stall. Get it as far away as possible. That one, East lays out and comes up with the goods and calls the timeout. Didn't like what he saw downfield. Feels that everything's maybe getting a little bit fractious and so he's just gonna take the patient option. I believe this has been the messiest point that we've seen so far. The first one with any sort of major calls or longer, take, uh, longer taking calls really. Uh, up until now it's been a tight but very well spirited and uh, organized game so a timeout seems to be a good solution to that issue yeah that was the deep shot from Germany after they finally earned the disc back but Great Britain very nearly gave it back on the first pass required full extension bid there from Tyler East and while the two teams get a bit of a breather we will do the same and we'll be back with you very soon The Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships, World Junior Ultimate Championship action here, under 20 Open Division. Great Britain up 11-10 on Germany. The testosterone is kicking in. We've seen a longish point so far. This might come down to a case of composure now. Vert Steck from the Brits. We haven't seen any particularly creative tactics in terms of 
offensive positioning from either one of those teams. No, it's been a very vanilla game in terms of strategy. <laughs> both, si both teams playing vertical stack and both sides playing match defense. Forcing out to resort to the very particular fun facts that the players have kindly provided in their player surveys. Yeah, generally it's been a one-way force, although we've seen a little bit of force middle from Germany as Great Britain get away with that to Thomas, the coach on the sideline, not happy. Well, you can hardly expect the players to keep their composure when the coaches can't do it. I think he's not quite sure how Germany didn't come up with that. Threw his clipboard to the ground in frustration. This one from Hillborn, Dice steals through. And the German Pick coach picking up his paperwork. And now Dice picking up the disc as well, but with a stall count rising, finds the short little pass, but Biscopec's not in the end zone yet. Where will he go? Takes advantage of the face mark to roll it around the defender to Dice, who goes up line. Comes off into the space. Tipped away a couple of times, trying to steal a few yards with that is Matt Quinn. Looked for a bit like he was playing a different sport there. And the Germans seem to have noticed and are going to quickly discuss it with their opponents. So my understanding of the rules is that you can mack it forward if you want. If you're not macking it to yourself to gain fit and to catch it to gain field position. I think with a D, he's just allowed to slap this a couple of times and gain yards with it. Mm, in fairness, he couldn't have known whether there was somebody behind him. So macking it forward kind of makes sense to keep it out of the hands of the potential I think maybe, maybe the last one is a little bit, is a little, the kind of the kick up is a little bit cheeky, to be honest. But you are allowed if you see, if you see the opportunity to hit the disc forward for yards on a D. GB keep the disc nonetheless. Wobble! Gives it right back to Germany. Yeah, Matt Quinn, having earned the turn, couldn't keep it. This game is getting a little bit agricultural now. Biskopek. Centers for Bohm. Bohm past the bidding defender into Bernecker's hands. That one all floats up. Dice stumbles. Now they're looking for Hillborn. He's the furthest player forward. Finds an option. Not too far away. Sideline loudly calling for a reset with the stall count rising. Hillborn comes up line. He's not too far outside the end zone yet. Hammer again or? Well, with the stall count rising. Oh, the cheeky lefty through. Hillborn gets it back and dishes into the end zone. Great Britain's first two point lead of the game. It's 12 10. That was incredible. Dice and Hillborn matchup is one to watch in this game. Dice, of course, with the height advantage over the shorter Hillborn, but Hillborn using his agility to absolutely quickly move around Dice as a mark. He managed to get that reset off and then struck, striked immediately towards the middle of the field for the score. Yeah, having a look, some of the highlights from that point again. There's Dice with a high D. And this Hillborn, I thought, was in real trouble here. And then just spots the opportunity, pulls the trigger on the lefty, gets the disc back from Weir, and then into the end zone to Tyler East. Yeah, Hillborn with the assist. But props to German end zone defense. They really made sure there was absolutely nothing in the open side. And Hillborn forced to take that inside lefty which basically solved the whole puzzle for GB. For the first time, gaining a two-point lead in this game. So giving a shot of a school board on a far field there as well. Trying to work out exactly which field that is. Yeah. 
So one more chance for Germany to stay tight in this game. Schlechter on the disc. Zero cuts from downfield. Uh, potentially because there's a call in the stack. We see the sign for an accepted call. So maybe even a foul somewhere downfield. Yeah, just a change in terminology there. Couple. Oh, there was traffic in the middle of the field. Was surprised he threw it. Fast couldn't come up with it. GB get a chance to pull further ahead. GB really up on the horse here. Germany unable to connect. It's Thomas finds ring rose for the first pass. So reset available, and the reset's taken, it's Thomas again. High release break around. Well find, well found even, is Morozov. Has to take the reset, going backwards to east. Good defense after the turn here from the Germans. Faking that first option, Cher lays out. There's no mark, I try and take advantage of this. Floats it up and gets it back. Thomas yeah, doesn't see the open side option that he wants. Now Morozov can't really then. Really good defense there after the turn from Germany's O-line. Some German fans to our left who are living every single motion of this game. So GB doing a really good job tiring the German O. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread Ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community.
burns Schlechter on the up line. as we are nearing the 100 minute mark. Up line cut, tight towards the sideline. Schlechter, his hair tied back behind his head, going towards the sideline. Good footwork by Cher. Around instead, gets it off to Schlechter. Fast. Finds Baltzer. Baltzer back to Cher. And there's no deep option to Germany's game at the moment. Brilliant, spectacular layout there from Biskopek. Biskopek to Fass. Fass takes the sensible swing into the center for Schlechter. And bobbled. Caught. Yes, but maybe not in bounds. Some opinions to be discussed on both sides. We see the players asking the sideline. Here is the centering pass. I think they seem... I thought they seemed happy enough that it was out, but maybe not. I'm going to see if we can get it queued up again. Would have been so much easier had it been caught on the first try. <laughs> Saved us all the trouble. But it looked like the index finger and the thumb couldn't just, couldn't quite claw around the disc. Oh, yeah. Who's number 18? He apologizes immediately to everyone on the sideline. Nathan Wright. He was first to come over and check. He's going to get called out on the stream. First, first to come over and check the replay as well. We'll have a look at it from the high angle. What did you see, Nathan? Did you see it well? So he land, So my, my interpretation is he lands in bounds, but he is taking off from out of bounds and then catches it before he lands in and thus that would make him out of bounds. That's my interpretation. In any case, it seems like the players have come to a resolution and GB are taking the disc to the front cone of the end zone. I've, interpreta I've interpreted that rule correctly, I think. But I appreciate that... Uh, and they immediately get hand blocked! <laughs> Well, that's one way of uh, of deciding it. Oh, I'm not sure whether it was hand blocked or whether he just kind of got caught in his grasp on a pump fake. And Germany reel it in for the important offensive hold. They stay tight. Yeah, just the one down. My, that point was a grind. It's one of those points where I get so overwhelmed by the amount of action happening that I forget to talk. Yeah. Do the only job that I'm meant to do. So we see it again here on the replay. Schlechter doesn't seem phased by uh, 
all the shenanigans almost and then takes advantage of the face mark from Tyler East to roll it around. Brilliant roll curve shape. Superbly weighted to the back of the end zone. That's why face marking is so dangerous, especially in the end zone. Especially in the end zone. Because Benji. all that needs to happen is the disc goes up early and by the time you've seen it, it's already too late. So the Union Jack flickering in the in the wind on the sideline, as well as the German flag pinned to the net behind the field. Both ready for either team to take the victory in this U20. First game of streaming day number three. And we have hit the 100 minute mark, but we're yet to determine whether the cap has come on. If it did, it would be a game to 13. If it didn't, we would still need to play out this point to actually determine the score to which we're playing. Yeah, volunteers just trying to clarify with some of our crew. So I think we finish this point and then cap goes on. Here's the pull from Germany. Bounces and rolls out of the back of the end zone. Wisely left alone there by Wright. The sideline game is picking up for both teams as well as they know that this is the last part of the game. So we think it might be game to 13 already as Germany get the block. They score here, it's the universe. The Underneath wind. is Kappel, as you mentioned. Yeah, Rachel, the wind is picking up a little bit now. Always seems to be the way when the games get tight. You might be able to, be able to see the flags in the background right now, the Czech one blowing from right to left. That one was a little bit high, but Biskopek so solid in the reception. Wants to get it off the line, but instead goes up the line to Bernecker. Pickle stops the play. Germany keeping the end zone stack very short. Germany finding the shot in the end zone to the ever reliable Benjamin Schlechter. And it's 12 all, game to 13, universe point. If his father is the president, he is certainly president of that German offense in the last point. Lovely stuff out of the Germans, quick upline passes. GB unable to halt their buffer that they've created in the second half. And we have delivered what you've asked for, a tight under 20 men's game. Germany, Great Britain will battle it out in universe. Great Britain with 12 10 up and had multiple opportunities with the disc to make it 13 10. But Germany clawed their way back into this contest and they're going to pull to the Brits on Universe. It is so tight and you always felt that it might be. After all, we've started this tournament with a Universe point as well in the opening game. GB finally taking their win over Poland after Poland make a huge comeback in the second half. Not surprising that the teams in this game are taking a little extra time to pick their final seven to play out the last point of this game. Yeah, you're seeing some of the highlights from what has been a back and forth barnstormer. First game of the day here in Wrocław. Highlights and uh, some lowlights in there, including that drop pull. See, have a look at Germany's D-line. You've got Medger, Dice, 
It's Kappel with the rolled up sleeves. Biskopek. Schlechter. Linus Luksch. And Henry Bernecker. Germany will start the universe point on defense. And with the added difficulty of going upwind if they do manage to force a turnover out of GB. GB catching the pull. First pass goes to Hillborn. Low throw, but two hands keeps it alive. Underneath to Jones. His impact's been not as, in, not as strong in this second half, but a really nice adjustment to make that catch behind him. Resets off to Thomas. Thomas wants to find Hillborn underneath. Doesn't like the first option of Weir. Wants to put it instead for Jones! And GB on Universe knock off the Germans. What a way to end the game in a spectacular fashion. A huge huck through the break side. Completely unexpected, both by the mark and the person defending the deep cutter. That was an incredible throw, held by the wind, but waited perfectly to land into the, in the hands of the intended receiver. And that is a huge universe score, universe point score, and a universe point win for GB. Red shirts are coming off in front of our camera. The lads are clearly super excited. I mean, I could probably do without the machismo, machismo posing, to be honest. But Great Britain celebrating their first win of the tournament, condemning Germany to an 0-3 record. That's got a sting. Both sides had their chances, and you felt from the off that it was going to be a tight game all the way. And it's Great Britain who emerged victorious in this contest. What a game. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and watching this wonderful matchup with us live at the WFDF YouTube channel. We have plenty more games coming up your way. The closest and most early I don't know I the closest the, the, the most <laughs> the I, genu I genuinely don't know where you're going with it yeah 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 the one that's coming up on next our next game yeah we're going to the under 20 mixed division here on the WFTF YouTube channel Colombia versus Hungary in what is sure to be a really interesting styles clash so don't go anywhere that game starts in just over 10 minutes time for all of our Ulti TV crew here on the ground, for Rahal Toshnerova, I am Benjamin Reese saying we will see you on the other side. Ulti.tv